E2I, this is the Shogunstein, back from the pandemical, back from the fungus. So we were not making too much content last month because uh, somehow in 2024, uh, the pandemical was back and I had the, the fungus, but now I'm back. Time to make some content. Parks Roll and Hike, game sent to us from Amazon Vine for review purposes. So just to be transparent, just to let you know, they did send us a review copy of this game. It is a roll and write or haha <laughs> roll and hike version of Parks. Parks was one of the go-to games for me during the pandemical, the base game and the first expansion. I played the heck out of it, loved the art. So this is a roll and hike. See what they did there, roll and hike, not roll and write. Version of the game. This is not gonna be a review of the game itself. We're gonna go over whether or not it's colorblind friendly, especially with roll and writes. Because one of my favorite Roland Wrights, Hadrian's Wall, is extremely uncolorblind friendly. So Roland Wrights are, you know, a good game, good type of game. They're easy to set up, easy to put away, uh, usually good for soloing. They're a good way to keep the brain active. I do like Roland Wrights. I was very disappointed in Hadrian's Wall not being colorblind friendly. So when I look at the Roland Wrights, Roland Flips, Flip and Write type games, I want to make sure they're colorblind friendly. So we're not going to actually look at the gameplay itself, but just look at the game from a colorblind perspective. So one thing that happens sometimes when you're colorblind is the rule book uses, you know, the colors that are in the game. And if you have trouble with the colors in the game, you're going to have trouble with the rule book. Not the case here. Very easy to follow the rule book. Symbology is very easy. So easy to follow rule book. No issues of color for colorblindness in the rule book. You're going to be doing some dice drafting. I'm over here now. The picture. You got some dice. You got your lead hiker dice. You got your regular dice. Two distinct colors, because this one has special powers. You got to get it a certain way. This is clearly darker. I think it's yellow or green. I'm not sure the color, but it's different from these. Symbols, very easy to see, too. So, very easy to tell apart the dice. Very easy to tell apart the different symbols. Our group token. You got the timbal in, like I wear to make myself look taller. You got the timbal in here, shoe shape, the regular tokens. Again, even though the, the color might be similar, the shape is different, clear symbols. You can actually see very clearly what everything is. Same thing with the, the board. We're gonna be putting things, very easy to tell. The, you know, this is this cube, this is this cube. Very easy to tell where everything goes. No issue with the board. When you play the game, you can play with different parks. And each park, you know, has some different rules, different things that happen during the game. The symbols are very easy to follow. So again, no issues of color, in my opinion, when looking at the cards with what does what in the game using the different parks. So symbols, very important for colorblind players, very important to have symbols because we can't rely on color. And these were very easy to follow where you're gonna write down and where you're gonna do your roll and hike into this little journal. They made it look like a little journal book. Again, a lot of very easy to follow symbols, no issues in my opinion with color of where to put things, you know, what gets marked off. Very easy to follow the symbols, very just again, colorblind friendly in my opinion. So overall between the, you know, the journal, the book where you're writing everything down, the board, the tokens, the dice. I'm over here now, you put yourself out there. Like the dice, the uh, cards for the different parks with the different uh, things you can do when you, uh, you know, when you get that symbol. No issues at all as well, in my opinion, because of the good use of symbols. Guidebook, rule book, official park guide. The rule book, very easy to follow. And again, good use of symbols, not a lot of use of different colors to kind of throw you off. So overall, in my opinion, based on my color blindness, and I'm red, green, brown, blue, purple, color blind, I did not have any issues of color with Parks, Roll, and Hike. We'll talk about the gameplay in a later video, and, and again, you can certainly play it yourself and see whether or not you like the gameplay. We were big fans of Parks in this house, but we were in a different house during the pandemic, but <clears throat> did like the base game very much played the heck out of it during the pandemic. This is the newer version, which is again, this roll and hike. And in my opinion, based on my colorblindness, it is a colorblind friendly game. 
which is good to know because when you're colorblind and you spend money, these games are not cheap. Board, modern board games are not cheap at all. I think this is running 25 bucks. You wanna make sure you can play it. So in my opinion, if you're colorblind, you're not gonna have issues with Parks Roll and Hike. So again, just to be transparent, we did get a review copy from Amazon Vine and we thank them for that. And again, and just to summarize, uh, Parks Roll and Hike, in my opinion, is a very colorblind friendly game, good option for colorblind players. Again, not talking about the gameplay itself, but if you wanted a nice roll and write, small box, you know, easy to set up, easy to put away. In terms of color issues, you're not gonna have this, whereas some games you might. And again, I'm gonna shout out um, Hadrian's Wall, which is probably my favorite roll and write, but terrible, terrible if you're colorblind. Anyway, Parks Roll and Hike, colorblind friendly. This is Shogunstein out.